Hi, I'm Trent Ellis, Underwater Director of Photography. Today I'm building and prepping the Gates Pro Raptor housing, the red V Raptor camera, and the Canon 15.5 to 47 millimeter cine zoom lens. I'm gonna get started by getting the camera ready first. To retrieve the camera plate, release the three locking latches and remove the rear shell of the housing. Pull the lock arm all the way out and remove the plate. Flip the camera over and align the plate with the bottom of the camera. Finger tighten the screws. Make sure they're snug, but don't over tighten with the tool. With the camera right side up, align the power control bracket. Snugly finger tighten the screws. With an Allen key, install the red monitor interface adapter. Next, we'll install the DSMC3 red touch 7 inch LCD into the monitor housing. Loosen the four quarter 20 captive screws and remove the front plate. Connect the monitor interface cable at a 45 degree angle until you hear a click. Guide the cable as you install the LCD. Inspect the O-ring and replace the front plate. Tighten the four quarter 20 screws in a star pattern until snug. Now remove the top dovetail plate. Check the sealing surface and O-ring. Then guide the red monitor interface cable as you lower the monitor onto the housing. Be careful not to pinch any cables in this process. The monitor may need to be swiveled to access all screws. Firmly tighten the screws in a star pattern. Now it's time to install the camera. Release the top latch and then the side latches together. Remove the rear shell of the housing. and clear the cables out of the way. Release the lock arm, pulling it out and away from the housing. Connect the red monitor interface cable to the top of the camera. Then lock it into place. Slide the camera in on the dovetail. Push the lock arm fully forward to lock the camera into place. Now connect the P-tap to the battery. Connect the EXT and the GCC cable. Pull out the power switch and record button on the side of the rear shell. Carefully manage cables as you close the rear shell of the housing. Once properly mated, close the side and top locking latches. Now it's time to get ready to install the lens. Start by removing the port base. This allows more room for the lens installation. I'm installing the 15.5 to 47 millimeter Canon. Because this lens is so large, I'll be using a lens support. Even after tightening, the lens support will feel loose. Once it's in the housing and tightened up, that won't be the case. Remove the body cap and mount the lens to the camera. Next, I'm going to install the 19mm guide bars. These thread into the housing. Firmly tighten the guide bar. Because this is such a long lens, I'm actually going to have to double up the guide bars to reach focus and zoom. A 
Again, firmly tighten this guide bar. My preference for setting up this housing is to have focus here, iris, and zoom. Starting with zoom, I'm grabbing a drive shaft long enough to reach that gear. The drive shafts have a flat spot on the end. This end will be inserted into the coupler on the housing. Insert and tighten. Before installing the lens gear drives, I like to loosen these four screws. This allows free articulation and easy installation. With two gear drives on the right side of the housing, start with the gear closest to the camera body. Align the gear drive with the lens gear. First, tighten the guide bar screw. Then tighten the two pivoting screws. Finally, tighten the screw securing the drive shaft. Here's a closer look at the installation of the lens gear drives. Align the gear drive with the guide bar and drive shaft, sliding it until it's aligned with the gear you want to control. Center the drive shaft and gear hub inside the bracket, then tighten the guide bar screw. When the lens gear and the drive gear are mated, tighten the two pivoting screws. Finally, tighten the screw securing the drive shaft. Once installed, check function of the lens gear drive. Repeat this process on the left side of the camera. In my case, this will be controlling iris and requires shorter rods. Check to make sure all lens controls are moving smoothly. Next, reinstall the SP80 port base. This accommodates 8-inch stackable port rings and virtually any cinema lens with underwater operator control. This housing also has an optional 110 port base with 11-inch stackable rings. This adds room for lens motors and surface control. The optional SP60 port base offers a more compact option accommodating virtually any DSLR or compact cinema lens. Because this lens is so long, I'm going to need more than just the four ring set of stackable port rings. In this situation, I'm going to use a second set of rings. Before installing each ring individually, check, clean, and grease each O-ring. Apply a small amount of grease. Spread the grease by pulling the O-ring through your fingers. This is a good time to check for any imperfections in the O-ring. Install each stackable port ring individually one at a time. Engage the locking pin and press the port ring firmly against the housing body. Rotate the port ring 90 degrees clockwise until the locking pin engages on the left side of the housing. For the second port ring, start with the locking pin on the bottom, rotate clockwise 90 degrees until the pin locks on the right side of the housing. Continue this process until the port rings align with the end of the lens. This will place the dome at a good distance from the end of the lens. Gates also has a chart on their website of recommended ring stacks for different lenses. Loosen the lens support thumb screw until the lens is being supported by the port rings. Now it's time to prep and install the dome port. First, I'm going to make sure that the outside and inside of the dome are clean. In this case, I'm using a glass port, 
so I'm just going to clean it. If I'm using an acrylic port, I may also need to polish. Firmly press the dome port against the stacked rings. Rotate 90 degrees clockwise until you feel a hard stop. Now I'll use the seal check system to make sure there are no leaks in the housing. The system includes a hand pump, hose, and vacuum gauge. Start by inserting the hose into the hand pump, then the hose into the back of the housing. You'll pump about 100 times for this housing. Remove the hose and connect the vacuum gauge. You should be trying to get around 100 millibar, give or take. Ensure that the vacuum in the housing is not fluctuating. Check again in about 5 or 10 minutes. If the vacuum has not fluctuated, you're ready to get in the water. Next, I'm going to install the adjustable handle grips. These can be adjusted to the operator's preference and have easy access to the record trigger, lens controls, and GCC. To power on the camera through the housing, locate the power control knob on the rear shell. Place the pin in the lowest position on the slot, push the knob in, and rotate clockwise. Now that the camera is powered on, go into your menu, system settings, power, and make sure power out is on. Also, go into communication, connections, and serial. The settings should match what you see here. If it wasn't already, the GCC gates command control should power on and connect to the camera. You should also notice the fan running inside the housing. The GCC is a great and efficient tool for controlling the camera. You have quick access to ISO control, shutter control, and frame rates. The knob in the middle will also adjust iris on DSLR lenses. There are four user assignable buttons. You can use them in both short press and long press, giving you eight different user functions. The gates command control module is fully customizable. I will link instructions that show a step-by-step -step process to set up a custom configuration. To change user assignable buttons in the camera, go to user settings, user, and here you can select the eight assignables you'd like to configure. One last check of the record trigger, and we're good to go. Now that the housing is built, all we have left to do is get it in the water and trim it out with flotation blocks and the various housing weights. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.